Hello my loves and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. My name is Jessica Alexandria if we're meeting for the first time. We are going to be diving into the week ahead. The candle that I just lit is my Psychic Vision Fixed Candle. We are going to be doing things different today. We're going to be bringing the best of both worlds. Tarot, astrology, and all of that is fueled by my intuition as well as knowledge of the astrological charts. I did spend some time beforehand in my meditation and I wrote some notes down for us in my notebook here. So we're going to be bringing all of those worlds together in order to give you the best reading and predictions for the week ahead. So if you can, I ask that you ground yourself and center yourself. As with any reading, it's very important that you connect to your higher wisdom, that you connect to the divine, your angels and your guides, that you call in protection, that you call in clarity and also discernment to know what is for you, and that you set the intention that the reading, the time that you spend during any spiritual message, that it be for your highest and greatest good and heart, hurt and harm no one. That is my intention for our time here today. So let me go ahead and bless the deck really quickly. I'll break each section down into chunks. Those chunks can be found in the description box so you'll be able to move at your leisure. If you hear any noise in the background, my, my chicks are here. I have five chicks that just hatched a week ago and they are living their best lives in the AC. So I'm gonna go ahead and say a quick prayer and then we're gonna dive right in. Angels and guides from our highest lights of the universe. I thank you for the time that it is that we are able to share together. It's such a blessing, it's such a gift. I'll be using astrology and tarot today and my intuition, I ask that you Allow me to use those gifts in a way that is constructive and positive for myself as well as the collective. What needs to be seen, heard, and felt during this reading? I ask that you also help me to see with clarity Again, hurting and harming no one. So um, first things first, I'm gonna share with you the cards that I have pulled. We have Six of Swords, Four of Pentacles, Seven of Pentacles, Ace of Swords, Ten of Swords. Clarifying that, we have Four of Swords, Eight of Wands, King of Wands, and at the base of this reading, we have Six of Cups. Before I, well, for those of you guys that know, I don't stick with just tarot. With my readings and my intuition, the tarot will trigger my internal visions. Um, I'm also working with playing cards today. I've, I've loved tarot, you guys know this, but the playing cards have really been giving me a lot, especially this deck in particular. So there is something that's coming up that I'm not seeing within the tarot. I'm actually seeing it in my, in my mind's eye. It has a lot to do with the government. This has a lot to do with um, abuse of power, cover-ups. Um, the question, as I said that, I asked in my head if it was about aliens and, and things of that nature, like those types of cover-ups, supernatural cover-ups, and that is underway like that's a <clears throat> that's a focus but 
I don't see that being a priority for the world this week. I see this more as cover-ups when it comes to pol politicians. Also, um, injustices that happen in the government. Inadequacies of the government, things that awful things that happen that instead of them protecting the people or protecting those that work and service, they are, I don't, this is such an awful way of saying this, but like hiding the bodies. There's an assessment of that. This is something that was once tried to literally covered up six of swords, four of pentacles, like under wraps, tight lipped, closed, closed door. closed doors, closed books, closed mouths, but that is under, that is being overly seen right now. Seven of Pentacles. This has been because of a result of the pressure of the people, ultimately leading to Ace of Swords, clarity, and the ending of, the ending, and I'm hearing the stripping of power of those who have policies in place, protocols in place, that enable, Spirit is saying, these inadequacies in our government or in our structure and the powers that be. This is something that has been under <clears throat> underworked for a, a while now. I feel that we will begin to start seeing more of this in the days to come. I'm seeing... Um, I'm hearing the word catalyst, and along with catalyst, side by side, I'm hearing the word revolution. So there is some type of major catalyst for change that's cre creating a revolt in the people. Or because of that, it's resurfacing now, Six of Cups, it's something of the past. I'm actually getting this really strong message of hope here that the spiritual realms are working on, um, I'm hearing accurate leadership and the word accuracy stands out to me. This is about someone who is capable. There's a recognition that human beings were flawed and we're intelligent, but not intelligent enough because there's a lot of influences that skew our power and skew our perspective. At the end of the day, spirit sees us as, as animals that are doing the best that we can. There's oftentimes an abuse of power. And it's funny because as I was shuffling, I actually heard abuse of power and how it's animal nature to pick on, to attack, to bully. We see it in animals all the time, even babies. We see it in infant animals like cubs, you know. It's also found within human nature to find something that is weak and go in and attack it. It's brutal. Whether it be actual physical attack or emotional attack, there's this desire, this innate animalistic nature to express that brutality. There is this emphasis on the brutality of the world right now and how unchecked it has become. I'm also connecting to the spiritual realms and how there's a spiritual plight, meaning that that's how the spirit is using this word. Um, the, or how, that's how spirit is defining this world, word is plight. It's an attack on the people, like it's a, like an entity, so to speak, a, a dark force. It doesn't, it's around, but it doesn't need to necessarily impact everyone unless you're inviting it in and you invite it in by unhealthy practices. We see this very much, you'll, I'm hearing you'll see this abundantly in the United States, specifically because of the foods that are being, that are, that we eat, they, they diminish spiritual power, awareness, they dim and numb 
our senses. It's terrible. This is, um, for those of you guys that are new to my channel, I'm channeling on my channel. And if I talk in third part person or first person, it's usually, it's not coming directly from me. I'm seeing um, an increase in pollen or something weird going on with like pollen activity, like pollutants in the air, but it feels natural. It feels like there's an imbalance and this creates headaches. I just heard insomnia. That's really specific because it's a, there's something about the herb or the plant that's in the air creates fogginess. This is another result of imbalance. I'm actually hearing how this connects to climate change, global warming. If you think about how we drink certain teas or we soak beans in order to create a concoction that has an effect on us as human beings, for example, coffee, Think about how if there's an overabundance of a plant in your area or that grows rampant across the United States or across this area, it might not be the U.S. Because I know many of you guys are from everywhere. I've Just this last week, I had orders from Sweden, Norway, uh, Japan, Australia. So shout out to all of you guys. Globally, man, I just, the love. But okay, that's just just being just. Okay. So this isn't exclusive to the U.S. This is a, a rampant problem that I don't think that people are able to see right now. They're, they're, it's under the radar. It's flying under the radar. It's unseen. If we can, if you think about how you can create teas using herbs, then what happens when that plant is in the air and we're breathing it? It can create confusion, fogginess, discomfort, insomnia, I also want to say that for someone here, there's a restlessness in their spirit and it's making it almost impossible to sleep at night. It's like you've tried a lot of things to create sleep for yourself and it just seems like it evades you. Yeah, five of swords. This is spiritual attack. This is energetic attack. Nine of Wands, yeah. This is, yep, Two of Swords, yep, confirmed. Joker, Six of Pentacles. This is energy that is being directed towards you. When you hear the word spiritual attack, you may think that it's from someone who is intentionally sabotaging, and it could be. They don't necessarily have to be witches or... directing and like knowing fully aware that they're directing energy towards you it's energy that is bothersome to your spirit so this could be someone that you are in cahoots with someone that you talk to on the regular someone that you see something that haunts you this could have been i just heard the word transfixed this person is transfixed onto you or you're transfixed onto them it's close, very similar to an obsession, or they have an obsession with trying to disarmor, disrobe, and take people down in the way that it's not, it's one thing to be like a whistleblower and to, um, I also feel like they're fishing. I just heard the word fishing. Like they're, they're trying to, they're looking for things to take people down. This is an internal demon. So like I was saying, it's one thing to, to be a whistleblower and to call out things that are wrong. It's another thing to it's another it's a very it's a whole other thing to go actively looking because you're you're trying to find something wrong. Like keep in mind human beings are imperfect. And we are always evolving. So that means that we are always outgrowing something, either because it's not a fit or because we learned, we lived, 
we've experienced, and then you do different. That's a that's a natural part of life. You that's that's to be expected. That should be planned for, for every single person that you meet. There's not one of us that's perfect here. If you start looking in and attacking in at someone, especially two of swords, this is energy that spirit is asking you to protect. I'm also getting a strong sense that this person or this energy, this entity is imbalanced. I would not be surprised if this is a reflection of a shadow self within you that is trying to evolve, that you're trying to evolve out of. It might be giving you restless nights, sleepless nights. It's something that you're grappling with, something that you are struggling to come to terms with. It could show up as self-sabotage. Also, for some of you, this might actually be health-related issues that you have internalized something for too long. And as all things, mental turns into physical. And a, an issue that you were struggling to digest, to digest a process now turns into something that the body is directed to release this malignant force you know and that could be grief it could be i just heard what is the word wow it's when like this is so specific but i'm spirit of saying it um like like it's like erectile dysfunction when someone is um like can't well, you know what that is, right? So it's something very, it could be all these things that are contributing. It's so interesting that that's the word that they use, especially since the majority of my viewers are women or identify as women based upon my YouTube algorithm um, or demographics. For many of you, I'm actually hearing that the way to heal this is something similar to a water, but I'm getting, it's almost giving coconut water, but it needs to be fresh coconut water, not fake stuff. It's, it's about putting your worries, putting your worries and feelings I just heard the cancer. So whatever it is that feels like it's growing, putting it in a cup of like coconut cream or coconut water, coconut milk. Actually, it's not water, it's milk. It's like creamy. Or you can even do it <clears throat> in a glass of almond milk or milk. It's very milky. And this will help to literally break down and calm this part of your soul or your spirit or this energy here, whether it be a person or, an, or, or a, a shadow self within you, it'll give it, it'll literally uh, give it calmness. It's interesting too because milk is known for soothing, it's known, known for nourishment, but it's also filled with digestive enzymes that will help break things down. So, um, For some of you guys, you'll ask about what milk to use and it's any milk of your choice. All right. Um, <clears throat> what else is going on this week? Um, for for okay, I'm I'm definitely seeing a lot of progress here when it comes to a goal. Things are gonna speed up if you have your mind focused on something. And last week you were really struggling with it. This week it feels like it's a change, a turn of a turnaround, a quick turnaround. You're feeling capable, sufficient proficient when before you might have been stumbling stumbling through like really stumbling through um learning or work or productivity this feels like a, a turn in energy a, a turn for the better Hmm. Some of you guys are really needing Queen of Wands here. Some of you guys are really needing to go independent, take an independent path. 
um, rest, recuperation, regeneration. I don't see this exclusively as staying in bed because there's something about that that kind of feels like self-rotting. You know what I mean? Like just not. It feels like going for long walks and but or walks that feel sub substantial for you. I also see for someone there's like red light therapy or going to places of sunshine and absorbing healthy rays of light. If this is actual sunshine, it's I don't see it as direct and brutal. I see it as replenishment. So you might be sitting under an umbrella of some sort. I also see some of you are wow, okay, I just heard like adoption. You might or the it, the concerns of taking on childcare. There's something about, which that actually came up in the intuitive messages. I'll share that in a minute. There's something about um, really being able to connect and have like a win when it comes to childcare or adoption or getting pregnant. There's, you're going to be basking in the glow of a, an, an, like an immaculate light is what I'm hearing. And I'm also seeing um, our immaculate mother. So that might be significant for someone here. There's like a, a miracle or a blessing that's coming forward. I also feel like there's, I just heard pioneer spirit. Someone ventured out in order to make a wish when it comes to child rearing, child bearing, and that prayer has not been lost. It's been felt and heard and received, digested, and is being brought down to life, brought down to the planet, and it's coming through to you. I'm also seeing a lot of clarity and focus. Someone's able to, if you've been dealing with a lot of procrastination or mental fogginess, ADHD, irritability, agitation, there's going to be an emphasis on your ability to focus and to see and to cut clear. And it feels like a breath of fresh air. For some of you guys, this might actually come through a breakup or a separation, but you, you may not see it and feel it and believe it now, but you will feel how much life is better because of this. It'll be quick. You'll look, you might be looking towards someone else or something else to come in and enter your life in order to give you a boost of life or to add zest and character to your life. And you're going to find that you've actually found that within yourself. It was you that you've needed all along. Someone's getting involved in sculpture and clay work or carving, like wood carving. I'm also seeing a burning of incense and I just heard gathering. So this could be a gathering of ancestors. I just heard something about the gathering of the ancestors is what ended the plague. So there's something about coming together as a community in order to invite in and implement in blessings. Also, having said that, I just had the vision of this book. It's called The Spirit of Intimacy. I'll link it down below if I remember. I should, I should be able to remember. Let me write it down so that I remember. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Ah, you guys, you guys see I'm learning. I am learning. I'll revisit that on the notebook shortly. But for now, let's carry on. Yeah, there's going to be a book here about ancestor honoring your ancestors, acknowledgement of your ancestors, and how it just ends a plague in your life. There's someone here that, I don't wanna say spiritual attack because it's not spiritual attack. That would mean that this person or this energy has some type of power or influence, yeah. There's some type of light directed towards you. Actually, no, it's someone coming to you because of your light. Yeah, it feels like they're trying to They're really attracted to you. It's so interesting. So this can go two ways. 
Yeah, this can go two ways. This is someone who light, like the lighter version of this message, and you'll know when you hear it. This person is attracted to you because of your light. Or this could be two things happening to one person. Wow. So this could be someone attracted to your light and a very like, very like, phys it feels like an attraction, like a physical attraction. But it feels more than that. They feel like they will try to protect you. And they want to be that person for you when they might not necessarily be that way towards others. Then it's so interesting because on the flip side, there is a presence here of someone who is attracted to your light, feels like you are somewhat of a safe space. That safe, that safety brings out an attack within them because there's something that within them, like that doesn't accept the idea of safety because it's never been provided for them. So they attack and they question it and they try to pull it apart and they're focused and it's wrong. Like it's, it's wrong for them to do that. You know, there's not, um, I'm not one who says something is right or wrong. In this situation, this is wrong. It's misdirected. And it's wrong because they're focusing on the wrong thing. Not only is it wrong to the person that's directed towards, it's wrong for that person who's doing it because you are your own problem. You are, you are your own worst enemy. Look at this. You have the, the Jack here and do you see how he's, or they, like I'm, I don't know how this person is just cloaked with this mask, this dark mask over them. And it's, it's literally highlighting the, the fact of the veil that they are looking at life through. It's a mental, it's an illness. And the more that they lean into this, the Jack of swords, the more that they lean into this feeling of not, they, they call it knowledge, but it's a perspective and it's not, it's, it's coming from a belief. It's, it's what they've learned in this life. It's their karma, their cause to bear, 10 of wands. It's something that the burden that is on their, their, their shoulders, their chest, their life. This also trigger alert. This comes from a person who's experienced a lot of abuse by being seen. So when they see someone who is actually a safe space, they immediately feel like it is not trustworthy and they go in and attack. There, I'm also seeing a connection, like they're putting all these things together to connect the dots. And it, it's like, it's like someone, I don't know if you guys have ever seen that meme of the guy, I think from uh, Philly, that show, oh, um, it's always sunny in Philly. That guy who's like trying to connect the dots with his uh, dry erase board. <laughs> it's giving that. Like the more you go off, the more you try making these connections. I don't mean to laugh, but you start making these connections and you're just doing all this. And then you're like, look how it all connects. And then it's like, if you could just pull that person back and see, they're looking at chaos. And again, it's one thing to be involved in, I, I, it's almost getting conspiracy. Um, it's one thing to be interested in conspiracy and to question reality. And it's another thing to get lost in that. This person is lost, is, is lost. This is a soul, a, a soul that has become lost and is still living. And that is a concern. I started to say in the very beginning that this felt like a spiritual attack, but it's not. It's it's not a spiritual attack towards you. It's a spiritual attack that's attempted to be directed to you. Anytime that you have energy or something drawn to your light and it's directed to you, it could come across as a spiritual attack. Attack. It can show up as a spiritual attack. But ultimately, the only person that is being attacked is the person themselves who is misaligned, misinformed, and moving from a space, operating from a space of their shadow self, and they're ultimately coming through as a bully. And they're drawn to you because you're a safe space. <laughs> it's wild. 
when ultimately they could actually benefit from someone like you or benefit from your light, but they would never be able to see that because the, the, this mask that they wear, it's a, sh a shield, but it's a shelter. It's, and it's the shadow. It's how the, how the shadow self works to protect itself because it wishes to not be seen. So it shows up in your subconscious. And this person, I don't know why, but I just see them sitting in the dark. Like, they might be like communing with themselves, communing with spirits, not even realizing that that's what they're doing, not even knowing that that's who they're talking to. They're talking to the spiritual realms, not in the way that's positive and constructive and healthy and helpful, but in a way that actually makes them go into a deeper psychosis where they just keep believing and the only person that can save them is themselves. I'm also feeling like someone needs to take their tarot cards away because it's just making the, the matter worse for them. Look at this. I didn't even see this, but you have Seven of Cups here on the bottom of the deck. Seven of Cups is the card of illusion. And again, it's all about like connecting the dots. So, um, yeah, we have three of wands, two of pentacles, seven of swords. I just heard that they want things their way. I don't know. I don't know why I want to say this, but I'm just going to say this. Um, no one cares. <laughs> uh, so when I say that, I mean to say that the way that you, this person, the way that they would want things to pan out, the reason why it's not, no one cares is because that's not, Collectively, the the, con the the collective consciousness, the higher vibration of collective consciousness rejects their reality. So that's why you find yourself sitting in the dark, fixating on people who are imperfect but living their lives for the better. Because, yeah, I don't know how to say this. You're just you just really are running yourself down. You're making yourself sicker. You're you will only able, only be able to go so far in your in your business and your life in helping other people until you help yourself. And this is the person who is directed, who is focused on almost obsessing on. And it's not. I don't think it's just you. I think it's a lot of people. There's a lot of different energies that this person is pulling into, and they are confused. And I just think going out to the ocean and opening your blinds and cleaning out your house would do wonders for your energy. Now, for those of you guys that I actually just want to move on because that energy is just so, I don't like to focus on stuff like that or even interact with things like that. But it was loud enough that it needed to be addressed in today's reading. Yeah, let's focus on new love. And then I'll talk to you guys about what to expect this week and um, the intuitive messages that I received. Yeah, someone is about to have a breakthrough when it comes to love and connection. You're going to hear about it through word of mouth. This might be someone expressing like, I have a crush on you or I want to make more time for you. I want to pour into us. So that's very beautiful. It's also very charming. The word is charming. You're going to be feeling in the love department. You're going to feel very loved and supported. I just wanted to tell you just now, I felt this really strong in my spirit to be open to this. Don't question it. Don't second guess it. Don't say, oh, well, how long is this going to last? <laughs> Someone just feels like that's their energy right now. I would just allow myself to enjoy it for what it is, whether it's going to be forever or a week or a day. Just enjoy it. This is the universe's way of pouring abundance into you and finding different ways to approach you with gifts. And I would stay open to that energy. I want to talk to you about the Six of Cups because now it's standing out to me. Seven of Swords. Yeah, I had a feeling this is someone from the past re-entering or kind of circling and trying to, trying to see where they can land or when's the right opportunity to land. They have something that is that they want to say or offer. Uh, for some of you guys, it might actually start off as an apology, but the that's not their only intention. They are trying to feel the vibe. <laughs> They're trying to see what 
you will say yes to. Take that however it resonates, but for some of you guys, it'll actually feel a little, I just heard forward, but kind of striking what it is that they may want. I, they, they do feel, if you're wondering if someone has changed from the time that you've talked to them and this person has been on your head and on your heart heavy, they actually have. All right, Spirit is ready to move forward. I want to talk to you guys about um, astrology. So this week I want to remind you that we do have Venus retrograde still. And Venus retrograde can complement a uh, compliment. Wow. Can complicate. Interesting that I said compliment. Can complicate a lot of relationships, money, spending, self-worth. I just heard the word abbreviation. I know what it means, but can someone put it down in the comments for me, please? Yeah, so Venus currently is retrograde in the sign of Leo. Sun is currently transiting through Leo. I'm also looking at the astrology chart right now, for those of you guys that don't know. Um, Venus is squaring off, moving away from, but still in a nasty little square with Uranus. The sun is also squaring off with Uranus. This is going to get more explosive as the week pans out. It's Monday, the time that, it is that I'm recording. I just heard... Um, Virgo leadership. Wow. That kind of is wild because I'm a Virgo too, but, um, this will create a little, uh, like a deviation, like something separates from something or you feel separated from something within you. I also see this though in people of power, positions of power, a Virgo leader or Virgo rising leader. I'm also seeing still more energy around leadership who has taken advantage of the people and has moved from a big space of bravado, ego, loud talking, I am statements, toxic masculinity. That's how spirit is referring to this. This is not my personal wishes and beliefs. This energy is getting actively taken down and diminished and embarrassed internally. They, I'm actually getting a strong sense of embarrassment. This also has a lot to do with monarchy, um, royalty, there's a huge emphasis on, I, I'm actually hearing like apologies or remorse. You may not necessarily see that this week. There's a chance for it though, but it's felt, it's felt very strongly this week. I don't know if this is referring specifically to Prince Harry is who's standing out to me the most right now. A sense of like tail between your legs. I'm sorry. I also feel like it's coming from a space of lostness, meaning that this this is new. This feels really new for him. I'm seeing this as Prince Harry, but it it feel it could be fill in the blank. It feels very remorseful and not sure how to fix this, but the intention is to fix this. This is not coming from a malicious place. It's coming from a broken place, and there's a desire to kind of fix it and make it better. When it comes to the government, though, the person who's leaning into their ego, this feels like trying to continue to move and hide the bodies, the bones. So you're, this person would be getting called out and questioned for something. Meanwhile, they're having bones being moved. It's, it's giving, this doesn't necessarily have to be big politics. This could be in communities, like a small neighborhood, small communities. This person is still moving bodies or moving money or something. There's something here that's being violated. We're going to see that this week. We should be able to see that this week or flowing into next week. So put a pin in that. This is a direct result of Sun Square Uranus, Saturn Retrograde, and Venus Retrograde. I wouldn't be surprised if this is triggered by the new moon that's going to be happening on the 16th. The new moon's happening in the sign of Leo. We're almost there now. For the rest of you guys, this new moon happening this week is going to cause you to explore a new, a new path, a new route when it comes to your life, your purpose, or bring in something. I'm seeing, I'm actually getting a vision of two rivers running, so or a few different rivers and streams kind of running in. So you might have multiple streams of income coming in. This is going to cre make you a more well wound, well wounded. <laughs> <laughs> well-rounded individual. There's not just one way of life that you experience. You're going to have multiple. For some of you guys, you again, there's this emphasis on childcare. So I don't know if you're leaning into 
education, our leadership in that way, um, being a mentor, something about like getting involved with the community. You might even be starting a community garden for some of you guys. That's a very lucrative, even though it benefits the community, it'll actually be lucrative for you or do very well for you. That's Franklin snoring in the background. There's a lot of pressure right now on relationships, but also it's interesting that relationships, but also work and effort and leadership in relationships, striking out, doing your own thing, even though you are in a relationship, there's an emphasis on being independent, not doing everything together, and that being a survival mechanism for relationships or long-term relationships, if that's something that you're wishing for. That's going to require a lot of self-confidence, though, so I would work on that. I'm also seeing some of you guys reading books on self-confidence or being more self-assured or self-aware. Someone is also leaning into, I don't know why I'm seeing like um, cooking, but someone is leaning into exploring a specific, I'm hearing the word culinary. Someone might be exploring a specific um, venture or venue that requires very tangible hands-on. It's like going back into, it's even giving like welding, like going back to working with your hands. There's a, a big emphasis and support on that. The 16th, the, the, the new moon in Leo is going to amplify that energy even further, um, big time. This feels long-term. It feels like you're, you're hitting the nail on the head. Like spirit is ref, is just like, yes. Some of you guys, it's wild. Cause it's like glass blowing or something involving like kilns. So maybe clay work. This is also something that feels really good for you. You might even start a business or this might be something that you're interested in and you're being drawn to working with fire and earth. I'm really worried as I'm looking at the charts about money, monetary issues, spending. Again, this is really big about being conservative, watching your spending, cutting back costs. I say worried, but I don't want you to be worried. I want you to be aware and just being mindful of overdraft fees. You might get you might get some dings on your account, some drops in your. This feels like a setup. This is crazy. yo. this feels like this. This is giving conspiracy, but um. This feels implemented by the government or something where, or like society where it's almost like a setup where people's credit scores drop or something. I don't know. If you hear snoring, it's Franklin just vibing right now. <laughs> Next week is going to be really tough for spending is what it is I'm seeing in the chart and what I'm seeing in my notes, like how I feel. I would cut back on costs now. To in, prep in preparation for next week, I feel like you're going to be spending a lot of money, not this week, next week. This is the 14th, so that would be uh, like the 22nd or the 23rd, I, I believe, is the start of next week. Also, um, some of you guys are really wanting to like run away or escape or go on a vacation. You can do that, but either way, make sure that you're not bringing your problems with you. Make sure that you are being present delete social media, whatever it is that you have to do, turn your phone off, put on your away messages on your emails or whatever the case is. Oh, Franklin is really snoring right now. Your spirit wants you this week to feel very supported. The next, it's not this week, it's the next three weeks. There's this emphasis on you feeling supported. It's gonna feel more intense this week and next week. So the next two weeks and then the third week, it's gonna feel more in alignment. So for many of you guys, I would prepare to feel a little bit of stress and pressure this week, but also know that it's for your highest and greatest good. Now, let me share with you some of my intuitive notes. Um, also, before I share with my intuitive notes, I want to tell you that Pahati Love Notes is still active and running. I think it's been almost a year now. I don't know. Time flies. Um, but it's been long enough. Is it, has it been a year? No. I'll look into it. But um, it's pretty much a $5 membership where I shuffle and channel messages for the collective every single day, usually. On and off, depending, because I do take breaks. And um, readings are still underway. And for those that are asking, this helps me with my email so that I'm not 
spending so much time answering emails saying like, you know, I'm working on it, I'm working on it, I'm working on it. And then the whole day goes by and then it's like, that's another delay. I understand the, the desire to check in though. I would do the same thing if I were you, but also just know that I'm working on it. Uh, the other thing that I want to share is, um, after we're done readings, I'm finishing the tarot book, the tarot grimoire. So just so you guys know, I just am really in a space where I don't know if you guys can tell, I barely want to show my face on the internet. And if I do, it's just very trans, fully transparent. Not that I haven't been transparent in the past, but it's coming like a more emotional place. And it feels really good though. It feels really healing, but I, I want to like head down, get back into my writing again because it feels good for me. All right, now let's go into our intuitive messages. So starting before I got into this reading or shuffling cards, India Ari's song popped in my head and I was singing as I was preparing for you guys. Not the average girl on the state. What did you say? On the radio. My worth is not dependent on the price of my clothes. So I would look at all of those lyrics and something about those lyrics is going to resonate strongly with someone here. And I too am going to look at the lyrics and post. So I would invite you guys to also leave a comment of what lyric stands out to you. But there's something here about um, being connected to being different, like not the average. So Spirit is wanting to use that song to inform you that you are not average for many of you. You're not average, so you won't have an average experience. So when you find yourself with the energy of comparisons, you're kind of setting yourself back. It's exhaustive is the word that it is that I use, exhaustive and then exemplary. And exemplary has been showing up a lot lately. So there's this emphasis on highlighting and supporting those who are trying to do the work, those who are moving from a space of higher beacon of light when we live in a world that is very exhausting right now. It's very draining. There's a lot of shadow. Like I said in the very beginning of this video, and I'm not sure how deep I went into it, but it does go deep. There's a lot of energy here that is pulling the collective energy down. Meanwhile, you have to try to strive to be a beacon of light and love. Um, so with exhaustive, it's interesting that I said try. It says don't try too hard. Most, oh yeah. So when it comes to being not average, this is not something that can be forced. It's something that flows though. It ebbs and it flows. So you are going to want to understand that there's going to be peaks and then there's going to be moments where your energy is a little bit more diminished or neutralized out to go ahead and plan for that because it's exhausting trying to, to maintain at this one level all the time. It's just not, it's not necessary. Taking breaks is so, so important. I heard, I was going to say like most won't feel the need to hear this or to, because you know this, but I said it's worth saying that someone here might feel exhausted by competing with those who are just sh shooting energy out. Let's say if you're a creator and you are like this, like these, especially like someone who's new and creating, um, whether it be pins or artwork or crafts, you don't compare yourself to what other people are doing because they may not be pulling from the same space that you are. They might be recycling other people's ideas or voices or um, inspiration. And if it's coming from you authentic, it does take time. So taking breaks is so necessary and just try not to compare yourself. And spirit looks out for amplified. Spirit definitely looks out for those who are authentically sharing. However, that sharing shows up. With the word exemplary, it's spirit said, and I wrote this down, remembering that you were built different. This comes at a cost and that cost sometimes looks like isolation, restriction, and restriction can show up in your diet, your lifestyle, certain things that you have to say no to that might be difficult for you to say no to. Other people living regular quote unquote average lives may not have to have that same level of restriction. But again, you're not a regular person. So don't expect regular outcomes. The next message that I wrote down is change your approach this week. I'm seeing don't do the same thing, which is interesting because this message felt soft is the way that I described it. It felt like this didn't feel like a, 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 a strict, cruel pull away from everything and then start over fresh. It felt like maintaining your, your current routine, but pivoting and that makes your energy soar. So let's say you're on, you're moving through the motions of your day to day 
and the, the pivot that you're doing is you're changing your diet, your lifestyle, or implementing something in, something new in, that adds more value. So it's there's this grace period and this inspiration that Spirit is trying to give to you this week to inspire a new approach to your routine. And it feels very, 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 very good. It feels very supported. Last, one of the other messages here that I am seeing and that I wrote down was that the neglect of a dependent is the word that spirit used. This could be an animal or a child. I wrote down that I'm hoping that this isn't intentional, but it happens, right? So let's say this is a person who has animals or an animal. You might be so focused on your studies and your your dog or your cat, you know, if you normally have a routine with them, they might have to wait a little longer to get their food because you're focused. Um, it, it, I'm hoping that this isn't intentional, but I do know that I'm reading for the collective and there's this shadow. So there's this emphasis on the neglect of an animal or a child. I didn't personally want to look into the intentional reasoning for this because I, at the end of the day, I'm going to be protective of my energy and there's certain things that I don't want to see or know. So I'm going to just leave it at that for now. Um, if you do suspect that there's abuse of a child or an animal, this is confirmation towards that. Having said that, if this is unintentional, and, I'm, and I believe that for many of you guys, this is unintentional, um, this, would, this dependent, whether it be an animal or a child, is pretty patient. Or if they're not patient now, they're known to be patient. I would not, there's this caution about not abusing that patience and... So even though it's unintentional, it's still coming across as abuse in some way. So I would try to bring them in, bring them closer as much as you can so that they know that, so that there isn't any permanent, um, uh, permanent stamping or marking on them. You know, um, I hope that makes sense. Then the last message I wrote, I think, oh yeah, no. Um, the last message I wrote is that someone is getting sick over you. They're like looking in, peering in, watching. The more that they look, the sicker and sicker they, they get. I would let them let them do what they're doing. It is what it is. Uh, sometimes there's this need to like third eye, or not third eye, evil eye energy. That doesn't work in this situation. Um, I generally feel like this person is going to burn themselves out. And that can go in a very a myriad of different directions and different extremes. The universe has an interesting way of dealing with people who don't, you know, who are just being weird, like just weirdos. I don't know another way to say that. They burn themselves out in, inevitably or things resolve themselves in a matter that they end up burning themselves out, you know. So I don't know why I'm hearing this. This is such a morbid example, but it's like someone who's like using their car to creep and then they end up getting locked in their car in the brutal heat of summer. It's like something about what they're doing gets them trapped. So it's not that you don't need to protect your, like it's not that you don't need to protect yourself or that you shouldn't protect yourself or that there's no way to protect yourself. It just feels like the punishment of this person creeping hurts them more than it hurts you and they'll feel the effect of it. They should just stop. Now, if this is you creeping, let's say you're looking at an ex or you're looking into someone else's life, you're making yourself very, very sick. I also heard the word verbatim. It's something that you might be repeated doing, doing, or you might be stuck on something that someone said. I would work on healing that part of you that wants to find, uh, to be consoled. Wow, is the word that just came through. Um, I would give that to myself instead of allowing that shadow aspect to take over my life because it feels very punishing if you stay in that space of rumination and just stuck. And then the last thing I wrote down was military scandal. So I genuinely feel like we're going to get some very scandalous energies this week or scandalous energies are brewing and we'll see that. Also, you guys know I was getting these really awful feelings a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, and I just saw fire and I saw it just exploding, like it just felt like a huge explosion. And right after I shared that prediction on Twitter, or X as I should say now, um, the Maui the, the Maui fires took off, and just terrible. And 
shout out to the divine again for the prophetic visions and messages that is that I've always am receiving. I had the weirdest feeling. It was two days. I felt so unsettled. I felt a buildup. It felt like a huge warning. I, I wish kind of that I would be more interested, I guess, or involved with zeroing in on it. But I just do a lot when it comes to daily readings and working my magic through candles, oils, etc. that to lean into seeing exactly the source of this message would be exhaustive and wipe out my ability to show up other places and for self-preservation and self-protection and desire I just don't do that. So I just want to give recognition to that prediction, that prophecy, how it came through and thank the divine publicly. And um, also give my love to Maui and support to Maui and all those who are in impacted by this. I mean, we're all impacted by it as a globe, but specifically those personally and directly impacted by that. that. And this, you have my heart. Really, I saw that coming and when I saw it burning and I just couldn't look and I knew that there was going to be so many lives lost and that I couldn't look, you know, I just couldn't look at it. I couldn't personally, I couldn't. And um, I also want to say like, thank you to the survivors and I'm not there, but also the people who are rallying around to help the community it's people like you, you know, just the helpers, the people who move in light. And I just ask for their protection and ask for the ability to be persistent and to and spiritual strength, spiritual strength, strength, and also healing. Because even though you might not be directly impacted or not in the fire, you know, there's still if you touch it, it'll burn, you know. Meaning that even if you're helping people, seeing people suffer and cry and receiving the benefit can leave a lasting impact on those who are helping. So I'm giving you guys, setting the intention for your for your spiritual protection and for your healing and for your strength now. And may the divine shield you. And thank you so much for your service. And for the rest of us in our communities, look out for each other. Be kind, be nice, be gracious. I know that we know this, but everyone's go living their life and... Everyone has a story and everyone has a battle. And we know that. I don't think that we should have to say that again and again in order to be kind to each other. I would just hope that that is your instinctual nature, but I don't expect that from everyone. However, it's worth, it's worth stating and it's worth saying that intention. So I'm sending you guys all of my love. Thank you so much. If you are a subscriber or if you're passing through, regardless, thank you. And I hope that this week is good for you. Reach out to me if you need me. If you need me, you can also find me working my magic at bahadilife.com. And of course, I invite you guys, every single one of you, to invite um, or to look into Bahati Love Notes. Again, it's a daily subscription. It's a $5 membership once, uh, once a month where I shuffle and pull cards every day or Oracle. And uh, yeah, I would love to have you. I'll talk to you guys later.